we got this question here from LP. Uh, can you address the quote unquote flopflation re ampere and how that means you can't rely on the leaked clocks and teraflop figures? 1.7 portable, 3.0, uh, uh, sorry, 1.7 teraflops portable, 3 TF docked to accurately assess the Switch 2's performance relative to PS4 or Steam Deck. And as Gary Colum has posted, it's more like 1.4 TF and 2.5 TF if, if converted to equivalent RDNA to flops. It's got a couple of uh, tweets there. This explains why you're only seeing base PS4 levels of performance for launch titles like Cyberpunk and Elden Ring, especially if you take into account whatever CPU slash GPU resource is constantly allocated to game chat, which has to work across all games as it's a system level feature like party chat on Xbox, etc. Alex, what is flopflation with regards to Ampere? Uh, for Ampere, uh, we've talked about this a couple of times in the past now, but basically it was dual issue FP32 and Ampere. And uh, that uh, when <laughs> right when Ampere was coming out, all the GPUs, we saw these like extremely large uh, uh, theoretical flops yeah. from the leaked spec sheets and everyone was just going like nuts. I can't believe, I mean, Ampere was great over Turing, but it was not the equivalent of those uh, largely inflated uh, FP32 numbers. And a really good example of that is if you look like a, at a GPU like RX 6800 XT versus RTX 3080. And there, um, you have a lot more theoretical flops due to this FP32 thing uh, on the Ampere GPU. But if you look at games that are primarily utilizing rasterization, compute, etc., in the normal sense with no ray tracing, uh, these GPUs perform extremely similar to one another with the RX 6800 XT actually edging in a number of titles. And that's kind of like been the way this has gone for a long time now. And when you would cross compare versus the previous generation, you would look at an RTX 3070 versus RTX 2080 Ti, for example, within a similar family of GPUs, just one that didn't have this dual issue FP32. FP You'd see the RTX 2080 Ti actually being better in a lot of titles, uh, even though the RTX 3070 had a lot, lot more for a lot of stuff. And uh, that just really goes to show that you really shouldn't be looking at, at least for this metric, the, the raw number, but you should actually look at like what it actually produces in the games that are being rendered. And in this case, we do not see this dual issued FP32 whatever actually having really any meaningful effect on performance in a way that skews it in such the case that it performs almost 2x, not at all. Uh, so I think the what Gary Colum, by the way, hi Gary, I haven't said anything to you in a long time, uh, but hi Gary. And uh, what, what Gary recommends, actually, I think that's pretty reasonable. If you actually want to think of numbers in your head, just like divide by two, and then you'll feel like a more appropriate uh, real rendering power level there vis-a-vis -vis other GPUs. Yeah, I think we've got to basically just completely forget about the teraflop comparisons at this point. I mean, Mark Cerny's basically said the same thing over and over. And especially when you're starting to talk about handhelds. So consider this, you've got like essentially 10 teraflops of compute in the PlayStation 5, right? Um, the Asus ROG Ally has got <laughs> 8.6, and yet they are not right. in any way comparable devices. Um, you know, this is a classic example of flopflation, as, as, as Mark calls it. And when you start factoring in handhelds into these comparisons, well, you know, again, look at that. 8.6 T-flops, I mean, that is so much further ahead of the Steam Deck. And yet, well, what can I say? You, uh, you know, the, the, the Z1 Extreme is indeed more powerful than the Steam Deck, significantly so, but not to the degree that the numbers are suggesting. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Power limitations, uh, definitely memory bandwidth. So it is literally the case that you've got to kind of just divorce yourself. And certainly the concept of comparing um, uh, compute numbers between architectures from different vendors, that has got to, that's, you, you, we can't really do that anymore. You've got to actually measure output. Now, going back to like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 era, it was a kind of like a different story then. You could compare them, I think, because fundamentally, they were designs on the same process node uh, with um, 
well, I was going to say mem- similar memory interfaces, but that wasn't the case with Xbox One. Uh, uh, and, and that showed in some of the comparisons, right? Um, but yes, I mean, that was a different time, you know, similar architectures, similar process nodes, similar power limits. But these days, everybody is going off in their own directions here. And you do have to look at the output of the devices to see what they're doing. And, you know, when you're looking at Elden Ring running at 1080p on a Switch 2, presumably docked, you know, it's kind kind of similar to a PlayStation 4. And it's basically, you know, as we've talked about both in the Nintendo Direct, uh, Direct that we did and also the hands-on, that's kind of like the ballpark figure, uh, the ballpark performance level that, that we're seeing. But even then, we've got to remember that... Um, Across the gener- across the generation, just as we saw with Switch One, you're going to be seeing developers targeting that architecture directly, and um, you'll you'll see results that you know are seemingly outstripping what the hardware is initially taking you know telling us it's capable of. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my view on it, Oliver. Yeah, I think you guys did a really good job there. But I, I really just emphasize there are so many factors here. Like you've got Ampere, but with low memory speed low clock rates, dual rate FP32, obviously, you know, it can be, it's just so different from RDNA 2. And even this comparison to RDNA 2, which I I understand the math here, and I kind of, in broad strokes, I don't disagree with it necessarily, but like, you know, RDNA 2 is more efficient per flop than GCN. So do we need to do another transformation from RDNA 2 flops to GCN flops again? Like, I don't know, some of this is just uh, a little bit, I think when we get two into the numbers and two into the raw metrics here, we can lose sight of what we're actually seeing with our eyes, which is that it's like doing <laughs> PS4 level visuals in some titles. And that's kind of what we indicate. And that's what we are, are, you know, at least that's what I've been saying. You know, a lot of these titles look like PS4 ish rendering in terms of their, in terms of their quality there, but also, you know, Obviously, Nintendo is going to do a lot with this console. Obviously, third parties are going to do a lot with this console. Obviously, that is not all going to be evident in the run up to Switch 2 or indeed on June 5th or indeed probably in the first six months or maybe even the first year of the device's life cycle. So we've got a lot to see here. But yeah, for now, I kind of just put the flopflation to the side, put the math aside, look at it with your eyes, come up with your own conclusions. (laughs) That's what I'd say. 